Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with me, your host, Agassino Zynga. And this is episode number 427. That's 427 of the Agassino Zynga show. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Great. Amazing. Good to hear. How am I, you know, hanging on in there, doing the best I can with the time I have available. If it's your first time, check out the show via YouTube. Make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe and leave me a comment down below. That'll be greatly appreciated. And if you're listening via the podcast, please give me a five star review down the show and share with all your family and friends. And as always, support via Patreon is greatly appreciated. You can support it the show via patreon.com for just Agostino. I'm going to be uploading one bonus show per month on Patreon only. So back of the show on there you'll get access to my exclusive bonus show only available for my patreon subscribers sign up on patreon don't delay sign up on there today the bonus episode is going to come at the end of the week so make sure you get on there before anyone else sees it get on patreon.com for just agostino that show will not be available anywhere else but patreon so make sure you jump on there don't delay how's things going man as you can probably tell i'm a little bit out of breath i've been uh pacing my apartment up and down ranting and raving talking about things in my head you know shouting things is <laughs> a profanitary uh prof- using some sort of profanity profanity or profanity 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 using bad swear, swear words right using adult words um in the face of all this madness that's been going on at the moment our GameStop have you seen what's happened have you seen what's occurred to GME AMC NOK uh the the trading platform Robin Hood to a certain extent free trade here in the UK it's been an absolute madness man so since I've kind of updated um essentially um you know a rogue element of uh a very smart very clued in uh financial wall street people on a subreddit called wall street bets had basically noticed some very fugazi and dubious movements around the gamestop um stock and they decided to play the hedge fund managers and wall street elite at their own game and driving up the value of um, said stock in a very legal and just way that they've done in the past you know quite evidently in years gone by and then for some reason the these um financial elites who for the most part are swimming in more money that they know that they can do with right probably you know generational wealth that goes beyond even generations whatever that is they got all their knickers in a twist and they decided to bring an end to it and how did they do the end to it i think we should have known this we should have been aware this was going to happen but they basically put a squeeze or put a word into these trading platforms like robin hood who essentially kowtowed and um, prevented users from buying gme stock earlier today and only allowed them to sell, which obviously naturally drove the price down and allowed the people who had invested in it and went to show in the beginning an option to kind of sell their positions at the prices that maybe they are able not to lose that much money on. It's quote unquote textbook standard market manipulation, like in an absolutely abhorrent, like you've seen various people on tv on places like cnbc and other financial television platform basically boasting some of these um gatekeepers are basically boasting and talking about how they needed to uh, put these safeguards in place to protect us the everyday man when in effect they're just putting those safeguards in place to make sure they protect their own pockets and it's flipping diabolical man it's just um it's such a weird and clear crystal clear reminder as to just how little these people think of us right just how much disregard and apathy they seem to have for our even existence that we dare to get involved and play the same game that they've been playing for generations literal generations profiting of it and essentially costing us the average day person our livelihoods and our potential and future to be able to you know secure any sort of um great future for our family and it's such an eye-opening thing for me because it really does show you how basically the game is rigged in any way shape and form most institutions have this element in them and maybe it's just been exposed now in the financial world but every sort of institution corporation um, especially in the higher echelons they have this way of is manipulating the market manipulating the options uh limiting the amount of people who can gain and profit it and profit from said options which then negatively um affects the future prospects of these people right like 
it's definitely a rigged game they try and make it seem as if all you have to do is put your head down and work hard but as soon as you work hard and you figure out what they've been doing to get all the monies and you try and play them at their own game they try and ice you out of it they prevent you from buying options on an app do you know how insane that is? Do you know how crazy that is? Robin Hood. The app is called Robin Hood, by the way. I think um, Dave Portnoy mentioned it. It's called Robin Hood, right? It's named after a guy who stole from the rich to give back to the poor. And now they're preventing the poor from making money so they can protect the rich. You couldn't write this. You could not write this. So this is courtesy of GameStop. Sorry, courtesy of The Guardian. It says GameStop shares plunge after a ban by Robin Hood app. And I have to admit to in the UK, free trade was also um, not allowing um, certain people or not allowing us, especially I think maybe after a few hours after um, the markets opened, I'm going to say around three or four hours later, it became very difficult to buy GME stock in any way, shape or form, especially when it went into a bit of a dip, it automatically kind of freeze the option to buy. It put you in a queue. And then as soon as you went back to the app, it said basically it had been rejected. So that was obviously marketing, market manipulation. And now, uh, you know, a, a small collection of people I'm sure are going to be added onto it have now fired a class action lawsuit against Robin Hood. So this is, gonna go on like if if they thought they were gonna be able to quell this uprising and quash the little man they've had, they've basically just poured petroleum all over it do you know what i mean this is a this this is gonna go on for a while so anyway let's continue the article it says um small investors mounting and the soul on wall street speculators suffered a setback on thursday as trading platforms banned them from buying more shares and gain stop spawning conspiracy theory political intervention and at least one lawsuit amateur trading app um, robin hood stopped users from investing any further into gamestop a u.s chain of video game stores and seven other com companies on thursday after an extraordinary rise in their value spurred by users of the chat forum website uh, reddit the move slammed the upward surge in the share price into reverse and sparked the allegation that the hedge funds had wielded influence over Robin Hood and other platforms to stop the route. Uh, the fallout even caused an unlikely accord between opposite extremes of the US political spectrum, with Ted Cruz, Republican Ted Cruz, and Democrat Alexandria Ocasio Cortez both calling for a hearing into the decision to what to halt the trades. Um, this is a tweet, obviously, from Alexandria Ocasio Cortez saying the post saying the following: "This is unacceptable. We now need to know more about Robin Hood's decision to block retail investors from purchasing stock while hedge funds are freely able to trade the stock as they see fit. As a member of the financial service CMT, I'd support a hearing if necessary." And Ted Cruz uh, re quoted tweeted that and said fully agree um then the article continues it says it follows a meteoric a meteor meteor meteoric meteoric that's how you pronounce it meteoric rise in the share price of retail gamestop um a handful of other stock including nokia cinema chain amc and blackberry that began on the wall street bets chat page forum and reddit where users took aim at the hedge funds making big bets against the companies as amateur investors spiked so, well, I keep, my reading out loud is so bad. As amateur investors piled into stocks that hedge funds had tipped to surge, to struggle, sorry, and fail, the resulting rise in the share prices saw GameStop's value hit 30 billion, 22 billion at one stage, more than 100 times what it's worth in August. This has left Wall Street institutions, including hedge fund Melvin Capital, sitting in billions of dollars of losses. That the decision, but the decision by Robinhood and other trading platforms, including Trading212, which is popping in the UK, and Free Trade, you didn't get away. Of it to restrict users activity by allowing them to only to sell and not to buy removed the major catalyst from the wall street rebellion's progress gamestop shares were down by 42 44 percent by the end of the day while the share prices in other seven companies caught up in the, in the affair including nokia blackberry trivago amc also suffered big falls as share buying from the, uh, was effectively halted traders joined in a frenzy have flocked to robin hood an app which claims to democratize right that's that's the irony the finance by letting ordinary people share trades the trades are offered uh, free commission charges on the app which is founded only in 2013 now has more than 13 users but by banning um but by buying ban so yeah, but the buying ban on the Reddit traders has sparked a furious backlash. Social media lit up with theories um, about hedge funds with the interests of the Robinhood company and other trading platforms flexing their muscles to squash the rebellion, right? And of course, here on the next page, we've got uh, Dave Portnoy sharing his opinion and views as to what he thinks went on. And basically, I echo a lot of this and co-sign it 100%. Okay, emergency press conference time. Maybe the craziest one that I've ever done. 
and I've been ranting and raving all day, but what is going on on Wall Street? The way they have absolutely cheated, stolen, robbed everyday people who have been investing with Robinhood and other E-Trade accounts and all this stuff by saying, hey, hedge funds are getting smoked. Billionaires are getting smoked. So we're no longer going to let you trade on certain stocks, GMC, AMC, NOC. We're just shutting it off. You can't buy those stocks anymore. You can only sell them. We are going to crash that those stocks so all our hedge fund billionaire friends can get out and not get killed. It is one of the most remarkable, illegal, shocking robberies in the history. In plain sight. In plain sight. No closed door meetings. Nothing behind. Just right in your face, putting a gun in your mouth and saying, give us all your money. And it is. It's very, very much true. And, and it's so bad. It's so bad. And look at this. A group of people have put together a class action lawsuit against Robin Hood. Um, it says here the nature of the action. It says Robin Hood is an online brokerage firm. Robin Hood purposely, willfully, and knowingly right, um, removing the stock GMC from its trading platform in the midst of an unprecedented stock rise, thereby deprived the retail investors of the ability to invest in the open market and manipulating the open market. Crazy, right? People are actually going to sue. So if ever there was a if ever there was um uh an example of the Streisand effect in some ways, maybe it's just, maybe it's not really a Streisand effect, but it's definitely backfired. They tried to um they tried to basically force us into selling our positions, kind of strong arm us, twist our arm, um, test our will, and everyone is basically held. No one's basically sold their position. Some people have got nervous and obviously decided to move on to other things. But for the most part, this exercise in making sure that we can stick two fingers up at Wall Street has worked and may long continue. I cannot wait until tomorrow. I cannot wait until next week. And I cannot wait until to see where this goes, isn't it? GME, AMC, knock to the moon. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. All right, what else do we have here? What else do we have here that I want to talk about? Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, this is one, isn't it? Let's just talk about this, even though, you know, it's a common be a little bit normal, standard, standard, flipping COVID news and stuff. But let me just give you a brief update, which is, I think, some some good news, some light in the tunnel in some respects. So, um, as you are aware, we're currently in a national lockdown here in the uk um which is obviously uh preventing anybody from living and enjoying their everyday normal life which is gonna which is kind of upsetting in all the ways that you could understand it to be upsetting especially when you consider the government that we have in charge and the complete calamitous approach that they've had to do with covid um especially a year on or you know 10 months on post it's been a bit of an embarrassment and how they've basically dealt with it and we haven't necessarily got any concrete plans no real dates no rule roadmap kind of specking out exactly what is due to come up but it's always have these little weird two-week review things which are always changing and malleable based on the numbers but then sometimes it's not the numbers sometimes it's the whim of whoever's speaking it can get very confusing so this headline which I'm going to play before this thing keeps the jumping to other screens. But this headline here, courtesy of Telegraph, said revealed the free stage plan to end lockdown in Britain is pretty encouraging, right? Um, and I'm going to go to this post here on Reddit, which somebody kindly posted the entire article because it's behind a paywall, naturally, right? An article in the Telegraph concerning COVID, which is uh, of a national interest, is behind a paywall. But, you know, less said about that, the better. So this is the full text here from Reddit. It says... Schools will reopen until schools will not reopen in the UK until March at the latest, earlier. Sorry, Boris Johnson has said as the government works on a free stage plan to release Britain from lockdown. The Telegraph understands that officials are working on a proposal that could see most shops closed until April, right? And pubs and restaurants shut until May. So, that early leak that came out that basically said they were aiming at some sort of May Day celebration in terms of allowing the pubs to be open along that somewhere in that weekend, which would then obviously give the Tories an opportunity to spin it as some sort of celebration uh, of British 
stiff up a lip and you know resilience and all this sort of nonsense when in fact they've allowed most you know people that work in that industry to basically bleed themselves dry this entire time with little to no support or limited amount of support no direction and roadmap as to when they can go and reopen their businesses so they can get an idea on how they can kind of rejig and reorder their supply chain really just haphazard um you know how they've basically dealt with the entire issue completely so this was always going to be on the cards and i think a lot of people who the honest ones who have kind of weren't really um selling themselves any dreams were always um aware that the fact that hospitality was the first industry to close when covid struck it was definitely um makes more sense that it would be the last place to open to considering the narrative that they've sold us that covid supposedly spreads easier and quicker within closed environments uh within spaces with not much um uh with not much what's that thing called ventilation bloody blah 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 it could easily give them an excuse to basically keep these places closed um there's maybe a wider conspiracy kind of at play there which i'm not probably that privy to but it does seem particularly odd that they would kind of go this far and push it until may considering that we have a vaccine considering that cases are coming down so our deaths all over the place but hey what can we do it continues it says on wednesday mr johnson announced that the schools would not reopen before march 8th even that would though it depend on the success of the vaccine rollout promising to publish a roadmap on february the 22nd which is still a long time right you'd think to get a roadmap in place considering the amount of time we've been under lockdown considering the amount of time these guys have been in offices drinking coffees and staring at white boards you would imagine they'd have some plan in place already in it but again february the 22nd um and he said that he would allow britain to begin steadily reclaiming our lives so the plan or the rest of it is kind of yeah let's continue let's continue we'll go back to this but blah, 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 blah. a senior government source said the current thinking would mean that once schools return it could be at least another month after that before non-essential shops should be allowed to be open the staggered approach would mean that if schools open in march uh, shops would be unlikely to get the green light until april while pubs and restaurants could remain closed until may all this stuff is so this is the thing that's really frustrating all this stuff is all makes sense right but this would have made more sense at the beginning, right? This kind of clear approach to lockdowns with some sort of idea of what comes next. Let's do this. And if that fails, we do that. That would have made much more sense in the beginning or even around you know the end of summer this would have made a lot more sense in august or something this would have made so much more sense but somehow they allowed people to eat out and help out go on a holiday you know push this idea that we we're gonna go celebrate christmas um then cancel it at the last minute like and now they want to ramp up and kind of be extra stringent and careful with lockdown measures when you just consider the amount of you know hands-off approach that they had in the beginning essentially put us in the position that we're in at the moment that's the really annoying part of it and there's nothing we can do in it there really isn't apart from rising up and protesting like everyone's doing in the netherlands and you know what well, i saw a video of some kids you know it looked like they were breaking into a protein shop or something but it was really bizarre but you know that's the most that we can do and even that doesn't really get anywhere right the police come they they deploy the army they you know they spray you with war cannons you go back home battered and bruised um you know eyes filled up with uh pepper spray or whatever they put in your eyes nothing changes it's not as if they're gonna suddenly you know kowtow and bow down to the whims of the public and say oh, you know what let's open up the economy they're not gonna do that so we're paying the maximum price we don't have an end goal in sight and if anything they just keep making mistake of the mistake of, they, they keep being allowed to make mistakes not correct them or correct them too late and then we're having to pay the consequences it's just really really unfair um amid the concern that the return to schools could cause an increase in the r8 officials are working on the phased approach to opening up which would see restrictions released at the uh at least at the a month apart so that the impact could be closely monitored so all well and good and i think the most important thing going forward is obviously going to be the plan it's going to have some concrete dates on february the 22nd we're going to get an actual idea on what they want to do i know the government it seems like they are a bit resistant and hesitant to put dates and things and targets in paper because you know it then gets used against them pretty quickly and to epic kind of troll proportions and you know whatever or not like kind of own proportions right there's a lot of clips out there of tory mps getting owned for saying one thing and then you turning or flip-flopping on the other way when the evidence 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 evidence
Ugh. Ravaged. I think my thing died, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, but hey, we're back now. We're back. But yeah, it's a it, it's a mad situation. You know, it is what it is. I guess we have to make the best of it with the time that we have available. And what better than tuning into the podcast? So thank you so much for being here with me. With me. Um, what else do we have here to talk about? Ba, 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 ba. What else do we have here? Oh, okay, cool. So this is an article from Mixmag, and it's got the title of "Warm Music Festivals Actually Happen This Year." Um, as a question, the subtitle says "Summer 2021 is fast approaching," and Naima Naima Ingram Naima Ingram say pronounce her name Naima Ingram surveys the festivals landscapes to find out. Ah, God Almighty, why does it keep doing that? They always get these annoying pop ups. Uh, Naima Ingram says. Do, 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 the landscape to find out which festival would like it to go ahead so um which festivals what festivals music festivals happen to this year i'd say yes i'd say that encouraging test that we saw uh trialed for primavera sound i think it was the end of last year maybe the beginning of this year where they had a controlled group of people come in get tested make sure no one's got covid if you did have covid you get sent home whoever got tested negative comes back in and then you know no mask free to move around do what you please and that went um that went well without any sort of hiccups i think there was another one that took place in germany we had one here in the uk at the beginning if you remember sometime in the beginning of summer something happened here in the uk i remember happening i forgot where it was it might have been a rock show or something but something happened or with some sort of nav singer but it happened right so there is an option for that to happen but it just requires an organizer or fe yeah, a festival organizer or somebody who has the <clears throat> the deep pockets to basically pull that off because it seems like most insurance companies are still wary of putting on events from what i've read so it's going to probably kind of it's going to probably whittle down to who's got the biggest pockets who's got the most backing who could take the most risk or who can afford to take the most risk and whether or not the punters are going to be willing and able to attend these events themselves you know because most people have spent you know maybe 10 months plus without a steady level of income so it's going to be pretty difficult to justify um to people to spend i don't know 50 60 quid to make up on whatever difference the organizers to make up to make sure it's covid secure there's loads of things that are in place that are going to make it a bit difficult but let's quickly read what she says here in this article it says Glastonbury has been cancelled for the second row we know that uh Glastonbury organizers michael and emily eves Eva Soria said that in spite of the efforts to move the heaven and earth, it became clear the festival couldn't go ahead. Paul Reed, CEO of the Association of Independent Festivals, said that the fate of the hundreds of UK festivals that take place over the summer is dependent on their size, while Gastonbury won't be able to welcome a quarter of a million people to the Hov uh, Worthy Farm this year. Smaller festivals may still be happening. Uh, da -da -da -da. There are 975 festivals in the UK, said Reed, though some of the larger events will be making decisions this month as to whether they go ahead. For many, the smaller ones, the cutoff will be later of course which i said mentioned prior i think even though the gas and Brie news was heartbreaking i still think the scale of the event that they put on it just wasn't gonna be uh feasible to make sure that it could happen within you know what four months or you know whatever it may be right it just wasn't gonna happen they need lead up time to get it organized but if you're a fairly small nimble um festival you know the kind of ones that you see getting hosted in local parks and whatever maybe by record stores and labels and stuff or club nights i think you can move to get away with it for sure it continues mixed mag has reached out to a number of uk festivals to find out how they'll be approaching it after claiming on social media that it's going to happen the question organizers newsome park and mint festival and Leeds told us that they're preparing for both festivals as normal interesting so the, the, the two in the uk that are going off said they are needed and we have rapid tests in place for both newsome and mint festivals to promote to stuart foresight um rapid covid testing is one of the key things that could unlock the festivals and the uk swallow events is the first company to offer a full rapid testing screening service facilities to detect covid 19 are available 24 countries they say the results are already in 15 minutes and the test to boost false negatives now i see this happening because in the summer especially in berlin we had some here in the uk but in the summer in berlin every open air venue was essentially opened and they basically allowed everyone to come in as per usual make sure you wear your face mask and keep some level of social distancing clubs like else probably didn't weren't able to kind of enforce that as strictly as they could but for the most part 
I didn't really hear of massive outbreaks. The only outbreaks I heard of happening in Berlin were the people that were doing stuff quote unquote illegally, right? Um, the kind of legal parties open there were basically quite safe. And if they basically implement, if they just do them as before, but they implement rapid testing, right? Um, prior to an event, or maybe add that as an add-on charge or something that's included in a ticket, well, regardless of how it happens or free, I definitely see a lot more venues opening up next year, um, especially, like I said, in the summer with your uh, a possibility of having it being open there so you'll kind of limit the amount of virus that can spread in one venue it says yes yeah, swallow events has been established digital platform a digital passport platform which enables digital consumers a verification process including age verification amongst others to be fully integrated with rapid testing that's where it gets a bit dicey in it that's where it gets a bit dicey all this sort of data they're holding on to you whether or not you got the virus or not supposedly what else information do they have there mirroring developments of wider culture the company says a digital passport can be uh, used to track ticket holders in order to show they've been um, tested and are able to enter the festival site safely um, albanian festival unam Unum um, will be using a Swallow Events test this summer and last week announced a full lineup of the assertion that the event will 100% go ahead while Primavera Sound just revealed that a non-socially distance event uh, rapid testing by on the COVID uh, returned with no COVID infections. Um, Boontown has uh, become one of UK's um, festivals in the last decade, has a capacity of 66,000 people. Whether or not it goes ahead will be a barometer for what happens in the other large festivals. And although none of the plans have been developed since March 2020 have stayed the same, Boomtime's communication strategy director, Anna Wade, is currently feeling hopeful the event will be happening. The festival is already launched in October to provide foundations that enable us to support on a safe, secure, COVID compliant event. So a lot of optimism, right? Like I said, I think if you think about the vaccine that's in place if you think about the amount of people that have effectively had it um people think people that have collected that have obviously developed antibodies um the advances in medical um treatment throughout this time that we've been in lockdown and you know just where the world is in the moment i definitely think there is a possibility of it but like i said i still think my early predictions of like actually being in a nightclub bum to bum shoulder to shoulder with somebody in a, in a dingy nightclub with no windows and no lights and no natural light sorry will not occur until 2022 for sure but if you if you're saying oh can i go to a party again and kind of wave my hands in the air like i just don't care for sure you'll be able to do it in the summer for sure so look out for those events and if you can go safely try and attend and support these fellows what else do we have here what else do we have here? Let's move on from that one. Move on from that one. A couple of more stories here. And before I leave you guys, what else I got here? Yes, there we go. Uh, come on, work. This is not working the best way it could do for me here. So, yeah, so this is courtesy of resident advisor okay so this is courtesy of resident advisor uh, and the headline reads as follows berlin nightlife won't return to normal until the end of 2022 says the club commission chairwoman pamela how do you pronounce that pamela Schoff Schoffben. that b is that an s is that Strasse? i don't know if that's just so it'd be will it be Schoff show show beth show beth show best pamela show best a show best i don't know but you know what i mean apologies for that one also urge the government to offer venues further financial support it says the following pamela chairwoman of the berlin club commission um expects the city's club scene won't return in full until the end of 2022 um she said she's who's also the ceo of local club gretchen told the deutsche press 
Augenter that clubs are the first to close and the last to be allowed open, RBB24 reports. She added that the venue owners will require financial support from the government throughout this transition as they cannot go from 100, sorry, from 0 to 100. Um, as it stands, the support is guaranteed until 2022 or 2021, sorry, in June. Speaking to resident advisor, the representative from Friedrich Schrenzen, uh Club about blank agreed that people in the scene has to be very patient and that 2021 does not really promise to be any better than the past 2020. God damn it. The statement continued. What we know and appreciate as a club culture depends on intensity, closeness, contact, intoxicating and nights, nice, sharing and exchanging. As long as there's a risk of exponential infection and people die from COVID every day, a return to the dance floor is not to be expected. The corona crisis intensifies capitalist injustices. It worsens the social division so that the economic um, condition for carefree clubbing is also deteriorated significantly. To what extent the Berlin party situation will be enjoyable before corona can be restored uh, at all is not foreseeable. I definitely agree that. And I think what is basically at play here is that the world needs to return to some level of safety before we even start thinking about having mass clubbing events again right i think the idea of having open air parties is definitely going to occur um places are going to need to you know have some revenue coming in djs are going to want to play people are going to want to go party there's going to be an aspect of some people willing to take the risk especially with the added um use of you know rapid testing and people being able to get vaccines privately or through their um you know state-run medical departments whatever it may be medical institutions sorry so there definitely will be more of an opportunity for people to go and party in a safe environment quote unquote but the idea that people will be back and raving in nightclubs with no lights um with no natural light sorry um you know chest to chest shoulder to shoulder bum to bum i don't see that happening again until 2022 now of course berlin is a bit of a unique case in that they have an infrastructure in place and they have clubs that are basically more suited especially with the experience they've kind of gained from last summer but they have they have an opportunity to be more suited to adapt to the changing climate of the scene obviously some can't but there are a lot of places that have open air sort of um, spaces that they can use and utilize so they're kind of a unique case they also have this infrastructure that allows clubs to basically survive a pandemic right where they have support systems uh, bursaries grants whatever it is that they do where they basically allow clubs to to survive in a city where most clubs probably wouldn't you look at london and what's happened here i dread to think the amount of clubs that have closed here and what will be left open when the economy does reopen so it's a very unique and probably privileged position that they're kind of in but they have to be careful too because they're also the haven and the sort of mecca for everyone that wants to go out so if they get it right and they really smash it out of the park it might inevitably it might inevitably um be a bad thing for them because it's then going to invite or be sort of like an opportunity for people all around the world to go and party over there same way people are doing in Tulum and these other crazy places so it could be a little bit counterproductive to the safety of the country and the health of the people forget people dancing to techno it could be a real counterproductive thing if they end up kind of acing it and figuring it out in it before everyone else does in Europe so it's a very fine balance mm -hmm. and a fine um, delicate situation to kind of be dealing with all together and I don't really um envy anybody in a club permission club commission sorry who has to make these really tough calls at the moment because you know this is a city where a lot of people's livelihood kind of depends on the nightlife scene um you know uh you you obviously don't want to piss them off but you also got an international audience you don't want to make sure you scare off tourists um you know you've got i'm sure other cities in germany won't be too pleased if you if they see german Berlin popping off sooner than their city is though that might kind of heighten and worsen the divide that might exist in terms of you know the way people think different cities are treated I don't know regardless it's a very balanced and um, a treacherous position that they're in at the moment but again the most important thing is everyone's safety right because I think you know even at myself I'm I'm desperate to go out to a dance floor but I think with the light in the tunnel right we have vaccines they have to be approved to varying levels of um, efficacy from in different places. But we do have a way out. There is a vaccine in place that's basically being developed. We are learning things about the virus as time goes on. We are being able to treat people better. More people are unfortunately getting it, which means, you know, less people will then need to get it. You know, you know, that kind of weird adage that people have. Unfortunately, people have passed away. 
because of due you know mass negligence and incompetence but we're in a position now where we can see the end of the t- the light at the end of the tunnel what's the point of rushing it what's the point of just steamrolling rushing it just so you can run back return back to the dance floor and for us to be in a position where suddenly the whole world has to go into lockdown again in six months we don't want that so let's hope things go through safely and we don't take any chances and we are able to go back to the dance floor in a safe and orderly fashion in some way shape or form what else do we have here? Where is it? Okay, let's go for another article. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah, this is the one. Yeah, let's just end this one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! You gotta love. You have to love. You have to love in it. Um, DJs in the scene, you just do, man. Um, you just do. The, the, like, maybe it's a maybe it's a, because of this whole uh, Robin Hood thing that's been happening with you know the GME, uh, the GameStop stocks, um, the AMC stuff, and the class divide that you're seeing on social media. The complete apathy and sort of disdain some of the elites seem to have for us regular folk trying to make you know um trying to basically take advantage of the system the same way they have been taking advantage of the system for generations um maybe that has basically reminded me of the unfairness of the scene i think right there is a there is an inherent unfairness to the scene that exists that you didn't really that i didn't really think much of prior I guess maybe because I didn't need to think about it or because I kind of tried to gleefully ignore it. But the more you look at some of these playgrave DJs, the more that you look at how they kind of conduct themselves online, the more you look at how they kind of approach what this thing is. And the more that you see that they all operate on the highest echelons and right at the pinnacle and top to top of the scene, the more you start to think to yourself, like, is there really, is the game actually can the game be played fairly and can somebody with just you know talent and the passion for the scene make it in the same way these guys make it when they rig it in such a way that doesn't allow new voices to come in in any way shape or form i don't really think so but i'm saying the game is rigged because uh business tesla right this amazing um where is she this amazing platform which has basically been spearheading and at the you know spearheading and highlighting a lot of the inequalities that exist within dance music sometimes to varying levels of success but in general i love the work that they're doing they essentially highlighted one of my closest pals peggy goo who decided that it was a good idea to go to moscow for her birthday and parade the entire journey on a social media page you know considering that we're in a pandemic and you shouldn't be doing any non-essential travel she traveled out there to russia to go meet her friends and have a good time but in order to do so there was also the possibility that she was going to get caught playing music out there and djing right and considering the amount of backlash some of these people have received online for their player graves you just assume they'd be a little bit more careful a little bit more um considerate of the of what's going on in the world and not wanting it to kind of rub it in the faces of people who can't travel the way they do that they're able to do what they want because i don't think anyone is naive enough right we're not dummies right we do know that the cultural elites the people at the top of the food chain are probably just doing exactly what the hell they want during this time right they probably have the ability to maybe ride this um this uh spell and years of inactivity out more than you and i can they probably have more uh financial buffers more opportunity to do stuff during the lockdown you know we're aware that this exists but what you don't want i think especially looking at what's happening with the whole robin hood stuff you don't want to be you don't want it to be like pushed in your face you don't want to be like um what um dave portnoy said in the video you don't want them to stick a gun in your mouth and then rob you you kind of want them to rob you without you realizing it right you kind of want her to go to russia and do what she's doing without you even knowing but the fact that it gets kind of pushed in your face as a constant reminder it's like haha look at what i can do look what you can't do and the fact that she also operates 
alongside other people in the scene who are kind of in that same sort of little clique who also kind of face no real consequences for their actions who kind of are allowed to kind of do exactly what they want it's just a very stark reminder as to how unfair the whole thing is isn't it and the reason why i say this because i remember one time i was covering it look at this label that um mrs peggy who is signed to liaison artist right liaison artist she signed to it and look at the roster of people that are on the same label that she signed to and this might explain why a lot of these playgraves aren't being picked up or covered by some of the biggest dance music publications like mix mag like dj mag like resident advisor like crack to a certain extent none of these places are covering this stuff because all of these people right eats everything adam bayer uh, arm anna anna schneider rod had kink uh, Kim and Foxman, Etap Kyle. There's so many people here who are plugged in to um, various different publications who have various different relationships. Look, Solomon, who I featured the other day on the podcast here, Shanti Celeste, Steffi, who I think had some other words to say about the whole thing. So I'll kind of bligh her, Masterplex, Hi. There's so many different people here who have played Playgraves, right? Some haven't, and some have done stuff a little bit underhand that it makes you understand like how rigged the system is because these very same people are only being afforded the the kind of opportunity to sort of quote unquote fly to the radar because they're lined up and married up to this you know this agency but luckily business of techno was able to kind of expose the hypocrisy of the whole situation with this little um slideshow of basically peggy goo uploading images on instagram if you're listening to a podcast essentially her um stood in front of some building in moscow um with a young lady posing looking pretty and cute it's a slideshow the picture two picture three and then for some reason the picture number four was either edited or purposely left to be blank with maybe the assumption that oh this is us being cheeky and being naughty and not telling everyone what we're actually doing but then if you continue to the further post that's linked in the thread um, business techno links some screenshots of people's comments on the actual post itself where it says hey peggy Gu, are you from russia or do you have a gig there obviously kind of in uh suggesting that she shouldn't be in russia if she's not actually from there because you're traveling from another place you may be carrying covid there another person says interesting how some people carry on life as normal especially in a place that is suffering immensely innocent civilians have been beaten up and thrown into jail for exercising their right protesting very disappointing and in, uh, ignorant of you peggy you to not use your platform to shed more light on what is actually happening in moscow besides your pretty restaurant trips free navali and this is very interesting because i hadn't noticed that this trip might have coincided with uh, alexi navali being taken into custody right unlawfully uh by vladimir putin for basically being a dissenting voice um you know basically highlighting the inequalities that exist in russia and at that very same time that these people were gallivanting around twisting and turning and throwing their hands in the air people in the streets of moscow were being beaten right like we see videos of like 50 year old women like with broken bones being pushed on the floor a 10 year old kids being arrested people being thrown in jail for like 18 months plus for just exercising the democratic right of protesting and these people were raving and just kind of not having any care in the world it's really really funny to be fair if you think about it it's so 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 detached from reality um, the next screenshot says, Peggy, hi, when the performance in Moscow? She said, yeah, really soon, hope so. The next slide, um, what's happened to the photo number four? She said, yeah, I don't know what happened. Annoying, right? And this is funny too, because this is the same person that I said before, which is why Daniel Wang is probably one of the most you know ineffective call out people in the world because this isn't as if like peggy goo is the most liked person ever right she's probably another person that maybe illustrates and represents you know the inequalities and privilege that do exist for certain people i'm sure certain artists will probably feel as if like her success is somewhat undeserving her journey has been somewhat 
um, inocular insulated from the realities of the world you would say that's probably a fair assumption to put out there it's not a judgment it just is what it is so it's interesting that someone like him Daniel Wang who's got a storied history in the scene somebody who's very respected still didn't find a way to properly stick it on her without him coming out like the absolute donut right so that was a really funny thing and not only a few weeks later after this whole episode where people were maybe having some sympathy for her she decided to put herself in such an uncompromising position and what is so weird about this is that again i'm a sensible reasonable kind of dude i know these people are probably partying and doing what they want to do it is what it is i don't expect them to be living the lives that you and i are doing and basically abiding by the rules and acting like losers right they i know that they're, they're pushing the line and chain and kind of you know taking advantage of everything that they can because i have friends in my own social group who are doing the same thing so you can just imagine somebody who has the means to kind of you know exercise that rebel that rebellion is in them a little bit more and has a bit of clout and fame you can just imagine what they going to do so i'm understanding of it but surely there's a way to do this without um attracting the scorn and the hatred of people online without it making you seem like you're lacking in self-awareness and you're completely detached from reality surely there's a way of doing it right and that would just require you to do what not post about it right if you just went on holiday with your friends to celebrate your birthday and you didn't post anything and you went to go and perform and play you're finding your group of friends and you didn't post anything no one would know there might be some intimation you might be leaked a picture maybe a pap might get you maybe a random person might see you from afar but if you made the concentrated effort to ensure that you don't document any of your birthday escapades or share them on social media no one will be none the wiser but the one thing that they can't seem to let go of is the one thing that's also bringing them the most amount of social media scorn now don't get me wrong these people don't give a shit right i'm sure they don't i think the fact that they're doing this i think shows that they like the negative attention they like attention regardless if it's negative or positive it kind of does and kind of itches and presses that dopamine button that's deep inside their souls so that's for that's for sure but in terms of um what it does for the perception of the scene it isn't really that good is it typically to be completely honest that somehow the need to party and rave kind of supersedes the safety um of the countries that you're visiting and it also inevitably in a weird way right puts out a bad message and basically gives people an excuse to not follow the rules at home themselves so it's doubly uh it, it, it has a double the the negative yeah the negative consequences are not only isolated or kind of concentrated at your feet they have sort of these weird reverberating effects and if anything as well like i said it just causes more splinters in the scene people already from what you follow certain accounts there's already a lot of scorn and hatred and sort of um envy and anger that gets pointed towards these people in the first place because they all operate within the top five to one percent of djing fees right and touring capabilities and gigs whatever it may be right they're the ones they're the privileged few so there's a lot of hate that comes to them anyway um and if anything this pandemic has basically proved that all the hate was completely justified because they're the only people for the most part who are playing at such a scale that is drawing this sort of score and i'm sure there are people that occupy the lower bands of the djing tiers the djing paid group tiers who are also playing but are doing it in the most subtle way but these people are just so hell-bent on sharing everything that they do when it comes to playing which is why i kind of stress that these people are most probably influencers first and dj second with their kind of weird heroin like itch to make sure everyone sees everything they're, they're, they're doing um it's inevitably causing them more damage and this is a last slide i guess that's kind of features um from what i can see it looks like it's nina kravitz peggy goo i don't know who the blonde lady is uh partying in this sort of private event they hosted somewhere um everyone looking nice and glamorous and essentially raving and celebrating as hordes of protesters on the outside are being pepper sprayed and stomped to the ground by russian stormtroopers epic and <laughs> And I guess in some weird way, they try to what have some sort of COVID secureness 
in the actual event by making sure everyone stands as far back from the DJ booth as possible, which was odd. They kind of covered, I guess, all the windows of the auditorium that they were in to make sure no one sees what it looks like on the inside, maybe. I'm not too sure. And again, the party doesn't even look fun. This is the thing that's always kind of bugging me. Like, none of these raves so far, apart from the possession techno raves that happened in Paris, like, none of these raves have really, really made me feel any kind of sense of FOMO, right? They're full of the same sort of wankers that you see on most of these tech house meme pages on instagram um you know they're most likely people of a of a particular um income bracket and those are usually people that party the worst it's just a very odd 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 situation altogether now let's get this off the screen because i don't know why it's doing that but yeah look at this look at this It's my birthday, I have to DJ, I have to play. Let's fight to Russia <laughs> in the middle of political upheaval. Oh man, I love it, man. I love it. Nina, of course, Nina never misses an opportunity to go and play somewhere, in it? You could, you could literally hire Nina to go play inside a volcano and she'll go there and dance and play her flipping brand of acid. Like, she will not miss the bag. I don't know if she got paid or not, but let's just assume that she did. Nina is always going to collect the bag. She would will, she will legitimately play in flipping Guantanamo Bay if you played her. <laughs> yeah man i don't know i don't know again like i said it's um it's disappointing in some respects because like i said it just highlights the inequalities that exist in dance music and basically does show that the game is somewhat rigged none of these people will face any sort of consequences they don't get covered in all the big publications no one points out the hypocrisy of them going to these places and essentially uh destroying an economy and citizenship in the hopes of playing their you know pretty forget forgettable brand of electronic music and in the end nothing really changes for their earning potential right it's not as if this uh, prolonged period of time away from the dance floor has kind of stopped or started any of their ability to go and play in different places so it's not as if these gigs are really amplifying or reminding people of what they do they're always going to get gigs regardless of where they, of how long um we're under any sort of lockdown so this need to go and play in places does that isn't there as somebody else who's probably coming up in the scene and is probably needs these gigs more than they do in that conventional sense but hey i guess you have to do what you have to do during these times it is what it is um i think for us regular folk what it should do is that it should be a reminder that when the world does reopen you need to support your local um club promoters your local event promoters your local clubs your local djs producers and do all you can to make sure that you kind of amplify whatever they're doing so that they can also get the same looks that these people are getting and you know essentially kind of feed back into the scene that you're um mostly familiar with or near to um that's the only way the scene is going to change because at the moment the industry has a stranglehold on who gets picked to be the next star who plays where who does this and like i said that liaison's artist group page is full of stacked of people who essentially are able to get away with absolute murder um, not put that much effort into their act or into what they do in general and basically gallivant around the world spreading the virus and essentially taking the piss but hey the future's bright hold on tight we're gonna rave again very very soon anyways that is the excellent English show episode number four to something i think thanks so much for tuning in that was a quick one hopefully you enjoyed the show for the time being i'll see you guys again on the other side for now take care be safe wash your hands and all that stuff enjoy your weekend and i'll see you guys again very very soon peace take care